Excuse me calling him in working clothes, Mr. Khan, but uh, I haven't been home since this morning. I've been doing a bit of uh, charity work in among today. Oh. oh, that is a pleasant sight. Very pleasant indeed. Uh, what did you want to speak to me about? I've been delivering groceries on behalf of Alderman Snaith's Christmas appeal for the needy. Oh, yes. Uh, I know uh, you and Snaith don't get on, of course. Uh, who doesn't? But he uh, does do a lot of good work along the way. Very pleased to hear it. Uh, well, I was uh, passing the end of your drive on my way home when something said to me, call in and see him. Did it indeed? It was clear as if a voice had spoken. Well, I thought it's Christmas, a uh, time of goodwill to all men, and here, as sure as my name's Alfred Huggins, is a sign from the Lord himself. Oh, so you've called to wish me the compliments of the season. Oh, no. Oh, uh, I, I do wish you a happy Christmas, and uh, what's more important, a prosperous new year, but, uh, no, I, I called because uh, I realised it was in my power to do you a service. A service? Of what kind? Uh, you're uh, taking the chair at the Keep Down the Rates meeting in Yarrow, right? Yes, what of it? Well, don't you think it's a waste of time? Why? Well, they're bound to go up anyway in February. Uh, look here, Mr. Khan, I'll be honest with you. We've not always seen eye to eye, but uh, you're a straight man and I like you and I do want to see you off the council. I love you. But don't you think that if you carry on running against the tide that you soon will be out in March? Possibly. Well, perhaps you don't mind. Perhaps it's true that you're selling up and clearing out anyway. Who told you that? Well, it's all over the riding. The public health committee's after your place. And now, look here, Huggins. You may have finished your day's work, but I haven't yet done with mine. If you've got something to say, say it. I'm listening. Good. I'm talking then. Now, uh, you've been opposing this uh, garden village scheme that we're planning on Lean Ferry Wastes. Mm, I have. You think they'll send the rates up? Well, it will. We can't afford our rates. No one can. Well, uh, we won't argue that point at the moment. Yes, uh, this is a, a fine house, Mr. Khan. And I can understand the man wanted to cling to it. Uh, would you like to make a little easy money? How? Oh. If you could use the Garden Village scheme as a way of saving Maythorpe, you surely wouldn't oppose it then, would you? I don't know what you mean. Well, you will in a minute. Now, uh, you've got three paddocks up the Scarrow Road, close by the waste. I have. About 70 acres. Oh, uh, 73. Oh, as much as that? Well, all the better. Now, you've been trying to sell them. Oh, do you want them? Well, I wouldn't mind them if I had the cash, but uh, <laughs> I'm a poor man. I've only got a tip for you. Stick to them. Indeed. Why? Stick to a man and pray God that the lean ferry waste bought by the council. Go on. But in a few months, those paddocks will be valuable building sites. You make enough on them to pay the interest on your mortgage for a couple of years at least. But why do you come to me? Well, it's simple. I, I want this scheme to go through. I know about slums. I was born in one and so was Snaith and we're out to abolish them. But we know your influence on the council. And we don't want to fight you. We'd rather you came in with us. Came in with you on what? Well, uh, obviously land values are going up all round the wastes. At least they will once the site of the scheme's made public. Now, as a matter of fact, uh, one or two of us already have an acre or two here and there. I mean, it's worth nothing now, but just wait a couple of months. You mean some of you have actually bought land? that you hope to sell to the council later at profit? Uh, that's the idea, more or less. And you want me to do the same? Well, I don't want anything. I'm just telling you for your own good. On the condition that I call off my opposition to the housing scheme. Well, it's up to you, but unless the scheme goes forward, then you get nothing for your land. I see. So you are suggesting that I should join you and your colleagues in making a fortune out of the council by buying up the wastes. Well, I wouldn't put it quite like that. Oh, you wouldn't, eh? Well, I'll tell you how I put it. You and Snaith and the others who are in it with you are nothing but a bunch of crooks and thieves. Thieves? It's people like you who give local government a dirty name. And I'm not just telling you. 
I'm telling the papers, and I shall tell the council, and if you try to get me off the council to save your skins, just try it. Now get out of my house! I came here to do you a good turn. There was once a horse dealer who came to me with a proposition as dirty as yours. I threw him in the pond. Now get out before I forget myself again. Miles and miles and miles with Ben, Liddy. Well, you sleep all the better for it. Went to the big house at Mace half an hour, but it was all dark and spooky. Did anybody give you anything? No. Nobody came when we knocked. Well, if I'd known, I'd have told you not to go singing there. What if Mitch Carl had come and opened that door? Don't want any of my family begging from the likes of her. Good in you get Good night. Good night. Oh, very generous of him. He's splashing out a bit, isn't he, for a man on his... Midge! It's long past your bedtime. Wendy went up long ago. Oh, but we've nearly finished now. Doesn't it look splendid? Yes, it does, my dear. Mm -hmm. We can finish it tomorrow. Oh, Come on, Midge, I'll go up with you for a few minutes. Come on. Oh, all right, but, but promise me I can light the candles. Well, you'll have to wait your turn with the others. They like to light them too, you know. Run along now. Good night, dear. Good night, Granny. Good night. Come on. Likes to think she owns the place, doesn't she? It's nice for her to learn to share. As long as it's not too late for her to learn, her mother never did. As I was saying when you shushed me, Khan's splashing out a bit for a man on his last legs, isn't he? He's written to Sedgma about Muriel, and he's asked me to be Midge's guardian should anything happen to him. Midge's guardian? A woman of your age? I've told him I'll accept. You did what? Are you out of your mind, Emma? It won't cost you anything. Robert's fully insured. All the same, to accept responsibility for an unstable kid like that. I'm younger than you, remember, and I don't fancy the prospect of having her left on my hands when she starts gallivanting with all and sundry like her mother did. I should have credited you with more sense. Who made you do it? Robert trusts me. I'm his friend. Aye, right, well, we won't say anything about that. What is there to say? People do talk, you know. And what do they say? Well, perhaps nothing you can put your finger well, I'm on. I'm nearly old enough to be his mother. Which only makes it more unseemly. Unseemly? To offer counsel and affection to one of the finest men in the county? My friendship with Robert Kahn and his trust in me is something I've earned over the long years something I'll treasure for the rest of my days. Something what's more, I will not have muddied and soiled by idle talk and, and small-minded jealousy. Look, I'm your husband, Emma, and I have a right to my say. When have you ever not had your say? I've always believed in letting a cock crow on his own. Dung hell, but now I'm going to have my say. The only thing you've ever been generous with in your life has been uninvited opinion. No, I don't know what you're talking There's about. a streak of jealous bitterness in you, and that it's still there after all these years. It's my failure, because I've supported you through it all and denied you nothing. Nobody can say that Alderman Mrs. Beddoes, uh, with a sharp tongue and a finger in every public pie, ever ruled her husband in his own house. No, I'm not and what's more, Jim, though I've never stood against you in anything important before, on this matter of Midge, I will not be opposed. 